So in many ways, this surah represents finality. And actually, interestingly enough, by the language with which the surah begins, when Allah says, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ شَقَّتْ When the sky is going to crack open. In shiqaq is used in the Arabic language for uh, physical objects that are hard. Like in shiqaq is used, like يَشَّقَّقُوا فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَا A rock that cracks open. And then, you know, ثُمَّ شَقَقْنَا الْأَرْضَ شَقَّ We tear the earth open, a mountain tearing open, uh, the land tearing open, a boulder tearing open, meaning cracking open. In fitar can actually be used, in the previous surah you found, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ right? You can use in fitar or fatar for even the tearing of a cloth, something soft. And the thing is, when you tear something soft like a cloth or leather or something, you could stitch it back up. But once a rock is cracked open, what happens? There's no putting it back together. The idea that the word in shiqaq is used in the beginning here, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ شَقَّتْ in and of itself kind of represents a finality. That this is bringing everything that's been talked about before to a final, final version. There are so many words even used for the sky, right? فُتِحَتِ sama, The sky has been opened. السَّمَاءُ فُرِجَتْ Another word for torn, which can be stitched again. In فَتَرَتْ There are so many words, but this one is kind of irreversible. It's the end game. And so that's what's, uh, where we start with. But then it's the... One of the most powerful ayat describing nature and describing the reality of the sky that you'll find anywhere in the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa says, وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ And this is a very difficult ayat to process. Let's go through it a little bit, little by little. The word adhina in Arabic can mean two things. adhina يَأْذَنُوا إِذْنًا and أَذْنًا or أَذَنًا إِذْن means permission. And أَذَن means to, to listen. Like udun is the ear, right? So, أَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا One of its meanings is that the sky is actually going to pay a close ear, pay close attention and listen carefully to its master. أَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا Implied within the meaning, why is it different from سَمِعَتْ لِرَبِّهَا It also listens to its master, right? Or أَطَاعَتْ رَبَّهَا It obeys the master. Even also, because it has kind of the texture of permission, it's as though, just to make this easy to understand, sometimes I give somebody, a student, an instruction, to do something, and they don't want to do it, right? But then there's a student that has been asking me, hey, I, I wanted to do an extra credit project, you promised you'd give me an assignment, and I don't give it to him, and then I don't give it to him, and finally I give it to them. In other words, when I gave the instruction, they were already eager to follow. They've been waiting to hear the permission to do what they've been ask, wanting to do. You understand? Simpler example would be children asking for recess, or a break. Can we have a break now? Can we have a break now? Can we have a break now? Then finally when the permission is given, they listen to the words of permission and they can do what they want. It is as though the sky tearing open is actually what the sky has been wanting to do. And it's been holding itself back because it didn't hear the words of permission from Allah. Allah didn't say, not yet. Allah kept saying, not yet, not yet, not yet. And it's just desperately waiting for those words to come from Allah. أَذِنَتْ rabbiha. It's a very scary thing to think about. This theme in the Qur'an that nature as we know it, is actually a wild beast that wants to just tear things apart, and the only reason it's being held back is because Allah hasn't given it permission yet. The earth actually doesn't want to stay calm. The sky doesn't want to stay intact. It wants to tear open. What Qur'an will describe, for example, when someone says, Allah has taken a sun, the skies are about to tear open because they hear somebody saying, Allah has a sun. The skies can't tolerate that kind of disobedient word to Allah. The heavens are shaking, but they are held together because Allah won't let them tear open. Sim- so all other creations of Allah, they, they, can, they only tolerate obedience. And this idea, why is it that it's waiting to be torn open? Why does it want to de- destroy itself so badly? You have to understand something. You know, when you experience trauma, like I'm, I'm reminded of the example of Maryam Salamun Aleyha, when she gave birth, and she wished that she was dead. Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha. I wish I was dead before this happened. When you, when you see, tra- 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 experience a traumatic thing, and you're going to be accused and humiliated, etc., etc., you'd wish for, for death over that. The obedient to Allah, the, the skies that are in tasbih of Allah, sabbaha lillahi ma fil samawat wa ma fil ard. All, all things in the skies and the earth declare Allah's perfection. When the sky watches us, because the sky is a witness over us, when it watches our evil deeds, our sins, and our shirk and our kufr, then it actually reacts. And it wants to react. Sometimes Allah lets the earth react just a little bit. 
So Allah says, ظَهْرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ عِدِ النَّاسِ That corruption came out in the land and in the sea because of some of the sins that people have earned. Not all of them. If all of them were earned, then the Day of Judgment would begin. But the earth can't hold it, can't hold it, can't tolerate it, can't tolerate it, and it has some eruption because of the sins of people on the earth, right? And just to qualify that, that doesn't mean if there's an earthquake that happened in Pakistan, it's because of the sins of people in Pakistan. That's not what that means. The earth reacts anywhere because of the sins that are happening anywhere. We don't make a correlation between those things. Oh, they had a flood because they were really bad people. We don't do that. The, the days of you know, uh, natural disasters, what we call natural disasters now, being a punishment on a qawm or a nation, those days are over because that was only in the times of prophets. You cannot make that statement now about any, any disaster that happens. These are all tests from Allah, but calling them adab is a mistake. That is not the same as calling them adab, that is a mistake Allah, Allah's book doesn't allow. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayyana is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the Deeper Look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayyanaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.